Good afternoon, everyone. I am starting my vlog exceptionally late on in the day. Yes, Porty, we love the soundtrack of your new carrot. <laughs> um, I have been non-stop filming today, but it has been such a good and productive day and my dressing room is immaculate, but I have to show you the best thing to arrive today. So, you might have heard me say in um, a few of my vlogs that Porter can jump up onto the sofa, but sadly, for some unknown reason, Barkley just can't do it, which is so weird because honestly, if I was to like hold my hand here, Barkley can jump on his back legs and like touch his snoot to my hand, but he just cannot get himself up onto the sofa. So I've been picking him up every time he like basically stands there and, and hits me with his paw until I pick him up. So I went in search on the internet of a not ugly uh, puff for Barclay to use. I wanted it to still go in our room. I didn't want it to be like a, just an ugly, that will do. I wanted to find one that was nice that still complemented the interior. I wanted to find a green one, but I couldn't find it. So I found what I think is actually much better and suits the house really well. It looks just like our carpet upstairs. I found it on John Lewis um, and Barclay is going to uh, demonstrate how he uses the puff. Come Barclay, show the house done. Show how. Show him what a good boy you are. Put his carrot up there. He'll probably do it if you put. Yeah! <laughs> that is one way to do it. Well done, Barkley Boo. Very happy boys that can now both get up onto the sofa. Look at him looking at you like, Daddy, where are you going? Basically, Porter loves this sofa because there is the blanket over the back of it. Look at these two. Um, and he scrapes and scrapes at the blanket to make himself a little bed for him to curl up in. You two are absolutely ridiculous. You have so many toys and you will always fight over one toy but just to give you a little look closer up I wanted to find one that was short and stubby like this but enough length for um, both Barclay and Porter to have their full body on it so that it wasn't sort of messing with their balance or anything we need to sort of move this uh, bed now because I'm sure they're going to spend most of their time on the sofa isn't that right boys but it honestly just made my day and Ali was, oh, you just got down, well done, Smalley. Well done, Smalley. So yeah, it's from John Lewis. And if you've got a Dachshund, I know that a lot of people that follow me have got them. Um, and you're looking for one that actually goes in a sort of more rustic natural interior, then I have found it. This is literally exactly the same as our carpet upstairs and it's absolutely beautiful. So yeah, I thought I would share it with you because I was on the hunt for one for a long, long time. All right, Squeaky McSqueakerson. Yes, happy squeaks. <laughs> Also, I wanted to say to you, you might have noticed that um, there's been a lot more notifications going on on my YouTube. Um, I've started uploading shorts and basically I realized it was the perfect place for me to share some of my more YouTube audience tailored TikToks. And then I was like, do you know what? It's kind of a great way to also do the more old school YouTube content that maybe I've been a bit discouraged from doing because it doesn't get the, the views in the same way because the views on um what's it called on shorts isn't necessarily the same as my vlogs my vlogs have always done really really well um but it's a really great way for me to do more concise content so if you're thinking mm, I'd really like to know what Lydia is loving right now I'll just upload a video and it's like five of my favorite things and it's under a minute and it won't take up too much of your time um I'm also going to be doing like outfit videos and little like tutorials and things like that in under a minute so that if you're ever like I wonder how Lydia does her hair or I wonder what lipstick Lydia is wearing at the moment or what have you, you'll be able to find it on shorts. Obviously, it's a hell of a lot more content for me to do, but I'm actually finding a really great rhythm with these things. So I'll link my shorts playlist um, in the description box down below. If you're not a TikTok fan, which I know that some of you aren't, even though I'm really finding my rhythm with TikTok at the moment, um, I appreciate it's not for everyone. It's also a app that will literally steal all of your time, so I have to be really careful with it. Um, but I'm just really enjoying creating some shorter form content that actually 
uh, I think that some of you might like. So I just thought I'd tell you just in case you're like, I know some pe people are a bit more annoyed about the notifications. Hopefully you can just know that my videos are still gonna be Mondays and Thursdays. So if I'm uploading um, a random time, you'll know that it's probably a short and maybe it's not for you. But I hope you do watch them because I think that you're going to enjoy them. I've just uploaded my five favorite things I'm loving, which are just like literally five things, five things that I've been obsessed with, just from like beauty to cooking, um, to jewelry, whatever. And um, I've popped links and so you can shop them if you want to, but just, yeah, just good old school YouTube content before the vlogs took over, which I love creating vlogs because I feel like it's just me and you and we're just chilling, but it is helpful to have those little bits and pieces that you kind of can just quickly click and find and enjoy. I just, I know that if I upload them to my main videos, it damages like the algorithm if your video doesn't do as well. So it kind of, this is where algorithms really don't serve people too, too well because I would love to do some, like to mix in some shorter form content with my um, like vlogs, but I don't wanna damage my channel in the process because it's really difficult to come back from that. But now this kind of shorts element has been able to make an area for me to do shorter form content that you guys can watch comfortably on your phones and um, not it's not like affecting my vlogs in any way, shape or form. So yeah, and also it's kind of chilled me out a little bit with the worry of affecting my vlogs in that way. I don't know. <laughs> who knows we'll see where it goes but I hope you're enjoying it anyway um and let me know if there's any sort of short form videos that you would like to see um and hopefully I'll be able to upload as much as possible from TikTok onto there obviously there's a difference so I can only upload one minute shorts at the moment so I sometimes have to edit a special one for um shorts and then I can leave the longer one on TikTok so you don't necessarily always get the most of the video, but I just thought I'd let you know anyway. <laughs> so it's later on in the day. Um, I'm about to get ready to, well, I'm kind of gonna pack a little picnic because Ali and I are shooting a little something for a campaign that we're working on tomorrow. But one of the things that um, I don't want to do is I don't wanna get into that place where I'm shooting content and it's not fun. So we've decided to basically put together a little picnic. We're gonna drive to the coast have a little date day picnic and as part of it we're just going to film it so we're going to enjoy it we're going to um, enjoy a day at the beach and just enjoy spending some time together and like it's not going to be stressful in any way shape or form so i'm packing up our picnic today and um just yeah planning a lovely day for us tomorrow so that's what I'm gonna spend my evening doing. My next job before starting dinner is to go around and spray all of the citrus trees in the house and in the greenhouse. I realized over the weekend that we had these kind of bugs on them and I'd wondered why the lemon tree in the hallway had lost all of its leaves and I realize now that it must have had all of these bugs on it that I didn't realize, but that's Barkley gagging. <laughs> Lovely Barkley. <laughs> um, yeah, it must have had all of these bugs on the, the tree and I just didn't realize. And what these bugs do is they suck the sap out of the tree, which obviously then makes it drop its leaves because it's not um, like moisturized and hydrated enough. Um, and so I quickly caught it on this one. So I've been spraying them. I asked on my Instagram um, about how to treat them because I've never seen these bugs before. And they were white, like this big white ugh. And um, just basically, really simply, I popped some washing up liquid in a spray bottle and absolutely doused all of them. I've got like nine citrus trees, so um, I couldn't wipe them, but they seem to have gone on the ones in the kitchen. Sadly, obviously, I lost my citrus tree in the hallway. It is currently in the greenhouse. I'm gonna be nursing it back to health. But thankfully, I have Freddie's flowers that are still going strong now and I think that they look so lovely in the hallway. That's what I really love about Freddie's flowers. It's delivered to my door, it comes in sustainable packaging and also what I like is that they come in bud. So they're, they last so much longer than other flowers. So these are my ones from last week, which I actually didn't expect to still be doing as well as they are because I've got my 
next bunch to pop in here because obviously I've got my um, autumn install coming but it just looked so bare and sad that um, even this olive tree in fact is looking a little bit sad I think this needs some love Mr Mill and Gordon is a serial overwaterer okay so I just find them looking sad because he loves them too much that he ends up killing them <laughs> Um, but I will pop a link to Freddie's flowers in the description box down below. I do have a discount code as well. So I'll pop all of the details in the description box down below, but I think we should do some flower arranging together. Now, I'm sorry about the lighting in my kitchen at the moment. We have had, since we had the kitchen done, we've had a nightmare with the lights underneath our units and they're the sort of most complimentary lights in this kitchen, but they, all of the drivers have gone. We've literally just had the biggest headache with them. And we're currently waiting for our electrician to come out and just basically start again. <laughs> start again. And hopefully we won't have this anymore. So the lighting isn't as flattering here because I'll show you. Can you see that flickering? That is under here. My favorite light is going. So um, unfortunately I can't have that on. But we are going to arrange some beautiful flowers. So inside the box, first of all, I love the fact that they come like this. So if we've got friends coming over and I want to dress up the guest bedrooms with some flowers, I think fresh flowers always look lovely in a guest bedroom. It just, I feel it shows a, a certain amount of consideration for people staying over. So without further ado, let's go into the box. So you will notice that your Freddie's flowers arrive and they'll look a little bit like they're kind of sleeping. You get all of the instructions on the box as well. So fill your vase, trim the ends. I like to take off all of like the leaves and things like that. Then you style them up, refresh the water, and it says make sure there are no leaves or petals in the water. That is something that is very, very important. And then you enjoy your flowers for longer. So in here, we have, I love an arrangement that has berries in. We'll get those out and ready. We have some eucalyptus. We have some beautiful, delicate pink roses. And I honestly, I don't know how they do it. I don't know what is in their feed, but these look all closed up. And I guarantee in a, in a matter of days, just like the ones out there, they will be the most beautiful blooming flowers you have ever seen. And then we've got what looks like some lilies. Ooh, no. Not for puppy dogs. So we have some solidago. The berries are St. John's wort, which I definitely recognize. And we've got some, some lily brindisi and also some gladioli or sword lily. So we've got lots of lovely different pieces in there. So I'm gonna grab myself a vase and get a radio. I don't know where I'm gonna put these. Maybe I can put these in my dressing room because my um, origeron, they need some outside time, I think. <laughs> Just to show you up close, this is the September issue of the arranging guide. You will get one of these in each of your subscription box. And basically in here, it tells you what's in your either weekly, um, two weekly, monthly subscription box that you have with Freddie's Flowers. It tells you what's inside the box. So you can see here, we've got uh, St. John's Wort, Golden Rod, Sweet Avalanche Rose. So it has all of the stems within your flowers listed so you can know a little bit about the flowers, but it also has an arranging plan. Now I'm a little bit off the cuff and I generally tend to sort of freestyle these things just because I enjoy flower arranging first and foremost but second of all I just like to make it right for the space but if you're just starting out or if you want to put something together quite quickly it basically talks you through step by step in how to arrange your subscription flowers so it's really easy, really simple, and also a really great way to just sort of get into flower arranging and understanding placements, because it's really important for your arrangement to be beautiful from all angles most of the time. So um, this ensures that your arrangement basically is exactly that. As you can see, it's kind of placing all of the different parts in all of the different places, filling the gaps. You start off here with the roses as your kind of main structure and then right through to your eucalyptus, which is your leafy kind of option. So do make sure that you make full use of your arranging plan and also my code, which is 50Lydia, and it will get you 50% off your first two boxes and also the classic vase, which is usually 25 pounds, you'll get that free as well. So this will be in your box with all of those bits and pieces so you can use it to help you arrange your flowers. I tell you what I'm very excited about for when we um, hopefully find a new house um, I would love to have 
I guess it will kind of be the utility room, but I would love to style the utility room as more of like a floristry room. And I would love to have shelves and shelves of vases on the walls, just so I can walk up, grab my vase, like all mismatched and per imperfect, just to, um, I don't know, I just love to have a room where I can make as much and less arranging things. So I remember I went to a friend's house not long ago and she'd actually turned her floristry room into um, a playroom and it was the most beautiful room I have ever seen. Like all of the um, cupboards and things like that were like oak and she had a sink in, oh, honestly, it was so beautiful. And I was like, one day when I'm a big girl, I would like to have a floristry room. <laughs> right, scissors, 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 scissors. Let's get the golden rod in first off. Oh well, I'll on that one. Just gonna clean up the stems a little bit. I might try my floristry frogs. And this is my newest arrangement of flowers from Freddy's Flowers. I have a discount code, which is 50 Lydia, and Lydia is in capital letters, which will get you 50% off and a free classic vase, which is worth uh, 25 pounds. So 50% off, um, which is a blooming lovely saving, but also these are obviously still in bud. These will bloom over the few days, so I will show you these as they come to life. That has just been one of the most calming moments I think I have ever had. If you're new around here, you might not know, but I used to live a very, very hectic life before lockdown. And when lockdown happened, I um, basically, without sounding too cheesy and <laughs> um, spiritual, I connected with nature heavily and I got myself a dog. Then I got myself another dog <laughs> and it basically changed everything and finding moments where I can just relax, kind of zone out of everything that happens in the world is a bit of a focus for me, hence why I got into gardening, hence why I got into growing my own vegetables and arranging flowers is very much up there with taking that time out of your mind in that way. I just find it completely zen. And also all of the boxes of flowers from Freddie's Flowers are like hand curated by Freddie himself. And they're also seasonal. So I'm feeling like this little bit, little pop of red and pink is just kind of getting me into those warmer hues for autumn. I live everything by the seasons. I'm obsessed with the seasons. Liven up my home a little bit, add a little bit more color or, um, freshness to my home. I really feel like there is something quite special about fresh flowers. So if you want to try Freddy's Flowers, obviously I have my discount code, which is 50Lydia. Um, I'll pop all of the terms and details in the description box down below. And I hope you enjoy having some fresh flowers in your home as well. These just look so pretty in the hallway still. Look at that. Well, the table is laid for dinner. I've gone for the Bertioli veg patch collection. So Ali has the onions, I've got the carrots, we have a French stick, and the risotto is in the uh, Thermomix. I promise we don't have this every day, but we do love it. So at the moment we're just enjoying it. As usual, it's with um, courgettes from my kitchen garden. I had two quite small ones that worked absolutely brilliantly with this recipe. So we've got three and a half minutes left and then dinner is served for us. One thing I do have to say is I am, I know I was talking to you about, um, what's it called, shorts earlier, but I do have to give, and I feel like I haven't done this yet, a huge shout out to the people on my um, TikTok because I don't know what it is, maybe it's because I'm being shown more to people that are interested in my content at the moment, but I really feel like we're building such a lovely community in the comments and everyone's so helpful, but also like <laughs> they say the funniest things when they're sort of, um, what's the word, like not defending me, but 
you've just got my back and it's lovely. So I'm thoroughly enjoying sitting here and reading through the comments. I've just uploaded a um, get ready with me an unboxing of the Johnstons of Elgin cashmere jumper dress and cardigan to TikTok. And one thing I have to say is the staff from Johnston, Johnston's of Elgin are so like they have so much pride there's so many of them that are like look at our work representing i've not really had too much of that before and it's really lovely i think it's kind of a testament to what it must be like to to work for them but i just had to mention that because i think it's lovely and there we have it dinner is served well i'm trying to prep for tomorrow's picnic and these two hooligans ah you do not bite that no i'm taking this the set tablecloth but these puppy dogs think it's their playpen porter off come on at the party off come on off of here please off no 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 off of here this is not your wrestling ring off off come on off come on excuse me off off no that is disgusting off and as you can see I've got the lights on in my dressing room because it is getting darker earlier. Gone are the 10 o'clock sunset evenings but there was one other thing that I wanted to unbox with you because I might take it with me just to get some pictures and when I tell you that this has been on a journey, <gasps> wow, we thought that this was lost forever Look, it's even got the home office border force, so they've definitely unpacked this and checked it for something. Yeah, they have. I hope it's okay. But this is from another brand that I found on Instagram. There is the most beautiful card. Oh, it's so sweet. So this is the after party card. So the brand is Luciana Emilia, I believe. I follow them on Instagram. And um, basically this is an after party card. It says, Luciana would love you to fill out and mail back this reply card, sharing all of the soiree details of where you, you're wearing your Luciana Emilia dress. And look at this, look at this. I just love this kind of attention to detail. Um, from a brand. I don't even want to unpack it, but basically you send back where you wore the dress and she obviously keeps it um, beautifully packaged and in a suit carrier. You always know that something is bougie when it comes in a suit carrier. Branded as well. Oh my gosh, I'm literally living. <gasps> So this is a blue gingham, I think it's taffeta as well, and this is called, this says, in the, in the label it says, Luciana Emilia, exclusively for Lydia, atelier of Luci Luciana Emilia. <sighs> we're going to have to try this on, but I might take this and take some pictures, because we're going to be at the coast, and it's just so coastal. Oh, I'm literally going to look like my uh, tablecloth. It's gorgeous. Hopefully, I can try it on for you tomorrow. And you can see it on, but now I'm gonna finish off packing up my bits for tomorrow's date day. This is why I don't have a baby yet, because I have a little sausage baby, like this one. He looks like a little crocodile from underneath, but he's my little baby. I think Porter would raise a baby very well. He would raise a baby? Mm. I think he's he's really, did you see him today with Harlow? He's actually get, getting so good. Basically my goddaughter Harlow was here this morning because I got my nails done. And um, Porter and Barkley were very, very excited and she's fearless. But after about five minutes, they were absolutely 
just chilled with her. Okay. Anyway, we're going to put the doggies out and go to bed, ready for our day day tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> Are you ready for your close up? Time for bed, Lummy. Time for bed. Good morning, everyone. I am up and ready to go. I've been up since six o'clock and I think we're gonna be leaving a few minutes later than planned, but we are um, ready to go. This is my outfit for the shoot. This is a Dolce & Gabbana dress I've had for about five, four or five years and I still love it. I've got the swimsuit version of this as well. So I'm wearing this. I've also packed, well, I'm going to pack two other outfits um, just in case, you know, we get the shoot wrapped early and I can shoot some beautiful outfits on the, the beach. So this is the Amazon dress that I showed you the other day, but with the long sleeves. This is slightly darker, I think. Than the short, uh, than the sleeveless version, and I've popped a Ralph Lauren cable knit cardigan over the top. Then this is my Luciana Amelia dress. Now I think I'll definitely get some funny looks if I'm wearing this at the beach, but I don't care because it's such a perfect setting to shoot the dress. So I'm going to load up the car with our picnic basket and head on our merry way. Right, we are in the car. Everything is loaded up. We didn't bother to take the boys. Um, baskets well bed out of the the car um they're not coming with us because we thought it would be a little bit um stressful with them as well but part of me really wants to take them to the beach one day so i'm hoping that maybe we can get a weekend where we can do this um before the summer is out because i'd love to see what they're like in the sea <laughs> um but everything's loaded up we've got the picnic um it's nice and fresh this morning, so hopefully it's going to be warm, but not too warm. The sun is shining, we've got clear blue skies. Fingers crossed we have a wonderful day today. Uh, I'm going to get the sat-nav going. We're going in the Range Rover Sport because you just shove everything in the boot and you're good to go, basically, because the boot is huge. Here is my husband. Ah, <laughs> Demonstrating the boot for me. Phone, wallet. Freezing in that dress. I don't think I am though. Look at the sky. I think no, we're going to be really lucky. No, just we are lucky. It's only a hundred miles. It's going to be a long day. Simon and Gordon looking very dapper. Hello, hello. Oh, look at my eyes. They always let me down when I drive. I don't know why they get so um, tired looking. But we have just stopped off at the service station for a Starbucks and we're just going to snack and head to the beach basically because obviously our picnic will be a sort of late lunch and it's still morning but we're making good time it's been a nice uh, drive so far and it is lovely and sunny looks like we're gonna have a little bit of cloud as well which is gonna be great look at that nice little glow and haze there <laughs> um, my tummy just rumbled <laughs> but yeah so um, we're making good time and it's a it's a nice a nice day. I think we might have lucked out, you know, which is making me very, very excited. Um, and also, I was going to have a coffee and an, a deliciously Ella energy ball. And Mr. Mill and Gordon is a bad influence. There are so many puppy dogs here. I sent Carrie a uh, TikTok yesterday that was like, when you accidentally, when you accidentally buy more dogs, and it's that, um, oops, I did it. Oops, I did it. And it's like, oops, I did it again six times. I thought that was very much me. Anywho, looking forward to our day ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, the sausage is not in the back. I am hoping that you can hear me. It is 
all of a sudden exceptionally windy um, and it's got quite cold because the sun's gone in. It's about to come out, we've just arrived. But Ali, whenever he gets cold, his whole body goes grey. So I've like sent him to warm up. <laughs> he's running around. <laughs> you probably can't hear me because of how windy it is. But once the sun comes out, it's really lovely, I promise. The sun's coming. It's coming. There we go. And it was warm. Ah. Oh. This is our little setup. I need to give it a bit of a zhuzh. That is our little setup. We can see the sea in the background. Very cute. Ali is just checking on some of the video that we've got, but we found the perfect spot, sheltered from any wind, although the wind has died down quite a lot um, and it looks kind of moody over to this side but actually we've got completely blue skies and the weather is glorious and if you just come up to the top here you can see and hear the sea lots of screaming children <laughs> but there we go my date for the day is having a snooze and missing his mouth with the grapes. <laughs> it's a lot quieter here now, which is quite nice. McDonald's? Doesn't mean you believe or agree, it just means that you like to enjoy to be honest, public debate. Perhaps someone can help me with this because the thing that I find is that I actually just like listening to like conversations sometimes and not listening to music, even though obviously usually I listen to classic FM. But I would say it's very argumentative, LBC. Like it is, yeah, because that's, that's a debate. Oh, yeah. you mean they don't debate quietly? Well, I mean, Somebody. we were listening to, what's the, what was the guy earlier? Something, O'Brien or something. Some some of the presenters are more shouty than others yeah, and, yeah. and more agitated. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I'd like to find a conversational... Um, oh, that was a red kite. Yeah. Oh, my God. Tell them what we saw earlier. It's so oh, sad. No, I don't want to tell them. Okay. It made me cry. We've seen some roadkill today. Yeah, so um, um, <laughs> the tone. Yeah, no, I will cry. But yeah, so I'd like to find a radio station where it's kind of like more uplifting because as you'll know, I don't listen to anything that's like a bit, I don't know. <gasps> what was that? That's a pigeon. No. I don't know. Well, I would. I mean, I it's, it's you, podcast, what I would say is, is that you're not somebody that wants to be bubbled into your own opinion. No, not into my own you opinion. You want to hear other opinions. perspectives and, yeah. and opinions. You just would like it to be discussed, not argued. Yeah, and just well, like, like I really love... Do you know what the issue is? You're listening to people that are passionate about subjects, and so they get to a point where they feel the need to raise their voice and vocalise <sighs> what... Look at this guy. I know, it's amazing. The crescendo. That is the crescendo. Goodness me. But yes. That is the creme de la creme. As Ali was saying, I like listening to other people's opinions and thoughts, and I'm not someone that can only listen to their own opinion, but I just think that I like the idea of, of discussing rather than arguing, because I feel like people phone up on LBC, For and they're like, do you know what? I just think that you're a bloody idiot. And he's like, well, hold on a minute. Don't call me a bloody idiot. Back yourself up. And then they just hang up the phone anyway. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I honestly yeah. don't understand. Well, I think that's just some of the presenters, not all. Yes, yeah, yeah. But also, it's, I think it's just how some people obviously choose to communicate and stuff. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd like it if they were to be like, well, this is kind of what I think, and blah, blah, blah. And it's all be like, well, you know, I, I don't actually agree because this is what I think. And they'd be like, oh, that's a good point, but this is the other thought process. <laughs> that's the kind of conversation that I would like. Yeah. But yeah. Well, let us know. Yeah, let us know in the comments if you have a suggestion of a radio station. No music, 
sometimes it could just be like just really nice chats it doesn't have to be political in any way sometimes it's nice to brush up on your politics but um yeah and obviously i love podcasts but you have to make sure that you can find a good podcast like i i listened to a podcast the other day and i was like this is just rubbish and i feel like i'm not listening to anything that i'm even enjoying so yeah let me know easy to find them yeah Good morning everyone. I am just getting ready to head to Seaster and Hicks because I have an appointment with them for some autumn winter tailoring and as you can see my Freddie's flowers are in full bloom. I obviously did my own kind of arrangement with this for this reason because you can see it in my um, dressing room mirror perfectly. I feel like it's like this beautiful arrangement that you can just see there. You can obviously follow the instructions in their arrangement guide. Um, I'm just a little bit, I get, I get a little bit wild and creative and I think as you arrange bouquets a little bit more, um, you tend to kind of play around with things, but most of these are in bloom. We've still got some buds coming through, some gladioli and some of the lilies, but all of these beautiful, rich tones are getting me very excited for the coming season. And I will link in the description box where you can basically sign up for your own Freddy's Flowers um, subscription. You can either do weekly, you can do two weekly, or you can do monthly. I just think it's a really lovely way to have fresh flowers in the house at all times. And I especially love to have fresh flowers in the guest bedrooms when we have guests over. So this is a regular weekly supply of flowers. That just means that I've always got something fresh, but this one was too beautiful to not put on my center island. So this one is definitely staying here considering I've still got my last bouquet. I honestly can't believe how long they last. And this is exactly why, because when they arrived, they were in bud and now they are blooming beautifully. I also I also think that the subscription service is such a lovely gift for someone. Imagine getting flowers every week or every two weeks or every month. I think that gifting a Freddy's Flowers subscription to someone is such a lovely and thoughtful gift because imagine a gift that keeps on giving throughout the whole year. This is actually a bit of a gift to me because I never have the time to rush out and get fresh flowers from the shops or from the florist. So being able to have it delivered to my door on the regular has been something that has really changed the game for me. So I am now getting ready to, to head to Seaster and Hicks. I'm gonna get my belt on, my shoes on, my jacket on because it is miserable today. And as you can hear, we're currently having some bits dropped off because a project is starting. Uh, in the next vlog so you can hear the workmen just dropping off all of their equipment and materials and things like that so it's gonna be a mad few days but I need to get going because I've got my appointment my new diary finally arrived this is the navy blue smithson diary and that is going into my work bag ready to head to Seuster and Hicks I'll show you my outfit for the day um, finished off I'm wearing my Holland Cooper blazer usual accessories and my fragrance is Serge Lutin Fleur d'Orange as you can see I've already used so much of this because it is so beautiful <laughs> right I'm en route to Seaster and Hicks now and the reason why I'm going today is because one of the things I've wanted to discuss with them is potentially having a um, really beautiful coat put together as well um, but also I want to look at some slightly shorter line blazers kind of similar to this one from uh, Holland Cooper that look even better over dresses because obviously I'm wearing dresses so much but I love a blazer draped over the shoulders worn over the top I love it so that's why I'm heading there today. I've got some little inspiration pieces like a Karen Millen coat that I've got and a Cordings blazer as well. So we're gonna head into Woburn, which is one of the most beautiful villages um, in this kind of area. And I'm going to have a chat with them about what we can get made and what the possibilities are. I love tailoring in this way, you'll know this. Like, I, I love it. It is expensive, so I can't do it all the time. It's something that I'm, when I think of something that's a really good piece to introduce to my wardrobe, I can either look for something that's more affordable 
or if I think that it's completely timeless, it's worth me spending a little bit more money to have it completely fitted because even with um, blazers that are off the rack, I still struggle with my shoulders. If you look at my Suster and Hicks blazers, they fit my shoulders when they're worn over my shoulders like perfectly. So um, that is the plan of action for today. And I just love tailoring in autumn, especially with more autumnal hues and things like that. I just love them. So excitingly, the guys are dropping off some bits for our next project, which is going to be incredibly exciting. And I just look forward to these things now so much more. It's going to be disruptive. That's a given, but it really is a exciting thing to do things to your home and I often get questions from you guys about why I'm doing these things to to the home to our home to our home <laughs> can't get my words out when we're planning to move and I think that a lot of people do things to their homes when they're planning to when, when they have plans or they know that in the future that they'll move but they'll still do the things to their homes because at the moment we don't have the house that we, we want to move into. So it's very much in the future. We also can see how incredible these changes will be for the house. And I know that when you see someone changing a house that you already think is lovely, you can often think, oh my gosh, why are they doing that? And I've even thought it with like my friend's houses. And actually when you see the after part, you're like, oh wow, okay now I get it. We're still very much living in the house as if we're, we'll live here forever, but we also know that we are looking and conscious of other houses, but we just want to get a few things finished in the house first. So, um, and you never know, we might get to the end of all of this curveball and decide that we want to stay because it's a very, like I've always said, where we live is so special. So it is a decision that, like I've said, we're taking very seriously in that we're not just moving because we want to move. We're moving because we want more land, but we want the same kind of setting as we're in now. It's raining, so autumnal. Um, so yes, to answer that question, because I know I'm always gonna get it. I'm not gonna keep obviously answering it because I do feel like I was quite clear when I spoke about it in the beginning, but just to reiterate, we don't have a house that we're moving to and so we're still living in this house. The goal is five years, but who knows what will happen? I'm actually um, reading an amazing book at the moment, which I think that a lot of you would enjoy as well. And I, I think, I almost think that, I don't know yet, I'm still very early on into the book, but the title is almost a little misleading and almost put me off like getting the book, but because I like the person, I went ahead and got the book anyway. It's from James Smith, he's a PT on the internet. He's very like um, frank and speaks very like honestly. Sometimes he says some silly things, but don't we all? And he's written a book about confidence. And the only reason I downloaded it is because I listened to a first part of, his, uh, uh, of the um, chapter of it and it really intrigued me. And it talks about setting some seven adjectives that people would describe you with and putting them in your diary to do it again on this day the following year. Those adjectives won't be the same. They will have changed massively and you'll be a different person. And this is the thing with life. And I, I don't I don't know whether this is something that everybody knows or whether it's some people know. Or maybe it's just some people that genuinely believe that they don't change. Like every month, every year, you're changing. And maybe it's very obvious when you're watching someone change because you're only obviously seeing part snippets of someone's life. But it's a really interesting book about confidence and the confidence to be who you want to be, which is something that I am ever evolving who I want to be as a person and the person that I was 10 years ago like I'm just not that person and people often comment on videos nowadays more than ever highlighting things that are so different about me from when I started and I speak differently because I value different things I really value being able to speak clearly and eloquently not just for me um, but also for you guys the people that watch my videos that are not like native English speaking, but also just the type of person that I am nowadays and who I am around. When I started my YouTube channel, um, I'd been 
in a relationship with someone who was very different to Ali and the way that they spoke was very different and so naturally you kind of mirror the people that you're, you're around and Ali speaks quite well and he speaks very clearly he's got a very nice accent and and so naturally when you're around somebody like that it you start to sort of change those things about yourself but anyway this this book is fascinating it is honestly fascinating and um i've literally only just started it so i'm going to listen to more on the way home when i've stopped blabbing at you but i think that some of you would really find it interesting as well and also um it might enlighten people a little bit on certain things about people or what have you but basically the reason why i was talking about that is that our, our decisions might change and i I always want to manage your guys' expectations on things that I really, really want to move and Ali and I sit often at night and we imagine our dream house and we show each other pictures and we manifest this house that we're hoping to find. But we also are fully aware that we have this lovely home already and there may reach a point where we turn around and say, well, we love this house. so." We're going to stay here and then we're going to make changes and I'm going to dress my home and I'm going to make it lovely because that's the kind of person that I am. And I think that it's the kind of people that a lot of you are. And fresh flowers and dressing your home and decorating and making it wonderful is really good for the soul. And it doesn't matter what kind of home you live in, it doesn't matter what kind of um, earning bracket you're in or and it doesn't matter what situation, you could very much just add a new candle to your home and the difference that it makes is, it lifts your spirit a little bit and it just makes it a little bit cozier. One of the things that I always used to do when we lived in our old house and I didn't have a fireplace of any sort is I'd buy those crackling candles to just recreate that cozy environment and it just doesn't matter where you are and it, it's really true what they say. Your glass is either half empty or half full. And I think that I'm the type of person that my life, my, my glass has always been half full. So, yes. We, we're, we're making some changes in the next video and hopefully you're going to enjoy it. We have arrived to my favourite place. So that part of the place, you can't go, it's got to go Monday. We are just going through some Harris Tweed and some slightly lighter tweeds as well because we want it all to go with this bag so at the moment looking at this one here with a sort of tan accent to it beautiful beautiful colors in here ah, as well yes but this is slightly lighter weight yeah if you feel it's slightly softer to handle ah okay mm -hmm. got you so this would be quite a, this would be That's definitely like a, an autumn winter yes. jacket yes it would in here, you know, you can do some, you can oh, have yeah. some little checks and pick some blues up and sort of unusual colours like the, the lovely deep purple. Oh, yeah. But the best way is do it by elimination. Mm. So, uh, no, I don't, I, I prefer that one to that one, okay, that one's gone, and then you'll end up with one that you like. Yeah. Now we are trying out the fabrics with some suede accents. I'm just checking if we've got something a little bit more rich to go with the tan tones. But oh, I just love this. It's like a fun game. Do then anyways, we'll do a, a rich tan. And I've got one here, I might have even got one here. One behind it. Oh wow. So that's gorgeous. It's um, almost like gold, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a champagne. -y yeah. Gold. So what we I might even find one slightly um, closer to that. The idea would be to do that as your body of the lining. Mm -hmm. And this would be your sleeve lining, mm. and then we'd probably put a lot, your little pocket inside down here, like we did before, and then contrast the pocket mouth yes. and a little flap on it, and, and just so the inside has a bit of style to it. Yes, I love that. Okay, right, let's perfect. Go. We've chosen this stunning green for the lining with a little bit of an accent from this beautiful colour as well. Now looking at fabrics for a coat, which I'm going to make. Similarly to this one, um, but have it all fitted. Beautiful long line. We're going to go longer just in case I want it to be a maxi. But um, yeah, this is actually Jeff's wife's coat and it is lovely. Beautiful Prince of Wales. So, so this is extremely heavy, Lydia. So you don't have yeah. to have this weight. Oh, I quite like that though. <laughs> you can make about three inches shorter yeah. put this on, I'll tell you. <laughs> 
I know I like the weight of it. Oh, and I love the length as well. Yeah, it's obviously too big. It fits on my shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my big swimmer well, shoulders. Shoulders, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest of Lydia's shoulders. Laura had it done with these pockets like this. Mm -hmm, like kangaroo big, pockets. Uh, where basically it's like a welted pocket here, mm -hmm. which you'd normally have on a man's jacket, you'd have on the, on the breast pocket. Mm -hmm. But it makes it easier to put your hands in, just uh, that, sort of, yes. that, that sort of look. Yeah, very, very. This is like Princess <clears throat> Diana's, mm -hmm. like, yeah. esque. I love yeah, it. Really lovely to see all the things that she wore and see yeah. her again on the 25th, obviously, unfortunate. I know. Do you know, Laura and I, when that happened, we. I was going into work, it was a Sunday morning. I went into work and thank God it was weekend, everyone. Yeah. I went into work to, because I had something to do, usually. <laughs> and um, as I was driving in, the news came out. And I phoned Laura from, from the shop, the little shop, and told her what happened. And then I suddenly, I just burst into Yeah, oh, I, I, I remember. I don't even know her. I mean, and I was very know, little yeah. at the time. You know, we went up to, we went up and I went up to Kensington Palace on the Tuesday, I said, we've got to go up. I don't, it's, like, it's so weird. It was funny, I was listening to um, something on the radio the other day and they were talking about how Princess Diana's death actually changed emotional culture, yes, it did. especially in men. I think, yeah, I did, because people just opened up because yeah. it, just, it just hit us. It, yeah. It's like a sledgehammer, it just hit us. It was yeah. amazing. I, I remember that was the only I time. I said, well, we've got to go up and see these flowers. I said, let's go. Yeah. Got on the train, went. That, that was completely so, off. Yeah, you know, so many people were saying that. Yeah. Like they were ringing in and saying, "I didn't. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not a royalist. No, I'm not particular. No. But I went. I went no. to the palace. I just Affected. felt like I needed to go. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's so fascinating. It was. It was. It, and it was beautiful. It's so peaceful. Yeah. yeah. People were sitting there with little candles. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I want that real kind of cinched waist because if I want it more looser, I'll just wear it undone. Yes, you will. Um, and you can wear a nice bit of fine cashmere knitwear underneath exactly, it. Exactly. Exactly. Or something like that. Yeah. But that's great. Sleeves could be a little bit narrower. Yes, and shorter. And I think you know, it'll save you wearing gloves when they're not. There are different ways you can do this. You could just have a couple of buttons on here, or you could do a gauntlet cuff, which means it's like it turns back, and then a little, a second piece of the same cloth, what they call a gauntlet, with one button. Uh, you don't know what I'm talking no. about. No! <laughs> <laughs> but there are different ways of it. So, yeah, that looked great. I'm going to make the coat a tad longer, yes, yeah, and yeah. then you can bring a couple of dresses in for length, and then we can make a decision on the fitting. Okay, that sounds perfect. But we can do that, so you have, the well, next over here, you'll have a flower hole mm -hmm. on the lady's side mm -hmm. here, and then on this side, there'll be a button underneath there, which mm. you can't see, and if ever you're out and you're really cold, and you, you want to make a different look, you can do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm not going to do that pointed lapel, leave the lapel to me. Yeah. I'll do the lapel so that you can do it this way. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to have to look at here is if you want this weight of cloth, yeah. there's only a few. Okay, but let's, let, let's start there then. But that doesn't mean to say, yeah, it doesn't mean to say we end up there because if you can't find what you like, you're not going to have it. Yes, very true. Um, yes, but I mean like what dress I wear. I'd yeah. probably have to wear a white no. dress or a... No? No, green. I love that you're going to school me. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to find something that's got not this but like a little bit more texture to it or greeny in, into it. I don't know like I, I, I love green yeah I know so, but you've done you've done that on that one I know I know which I know. you could have done with your coat actually <laughs> you, could yeah. that, you could have had that as a coat yeah but don't go there with your coat no I, I, otherwise I've got a full set yeah Jeff is going to show us just how durable this fabric is he's just putting a pencil through he just showed this to me and it literally made my jaw drop And there is literally no hole. I actually can't believe that. This is going to be great for cats that I've got at home that are a bit clawy. <laughs> because it's a traditional loom, it's quite a loose weave, so that's how it works. Wow. And obviously woven in the Isle of Harris, that's why it's called Harris Tweed. Huh, that is unbelievable. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> Well, I am back from my morning with Jeff at Seaster and Hicks, and we've definitely designed some amazing pieces. So basically what I'm getting is a top coat, and what I wanted to do was to design a very, very specific blazer, which is more of a cropped blazer, so it'll look even more elegant alongside um, my dresses when I wear, the, wear it over dresses. And we've gone for a real kind of traditional fabric um, design, but we're giving it a much more modern twist. So it's gonna have that kind of 
typical Pierre Balmain style of jacket, but slightly more cropped. Thought of going mad at people in the garden. Um, slightly more cropped and just giving it that like modern touch. And then we've gone for the top coat, which is gonna be slightly longer line because we want it to wear with dresses and things like that. Lots of traditional colors, lots of rich, warm hues. We've gone for a fabric from uh, Huddersfield Fine, which is for the top coat and then a fabric which is a traditional Harris tweed from Holland and Sherry. So um, really, really beautiful fabrics. We've got a lot of Harris tweed in our house, but I wanted to have something that was really wearable, but not tr too, tr too traditional. Um, so yes, I'm very excited. I've got a fitting for them in two weeks time. And then when I come and pick them up, we're actually gonna start working on our pieces for spring, summer, because there's definitely more tailoring that I want to introduce in terms of like, um, some chalk stripe blazers and things like that. So yes, I'm definitely finding my rhythm when it comes to the tailored pieces that I want. Jeff had such great advice and he was, he was really good. There were moments when I picked things and he was like, but I feel like you could get that quite easily ready to wear. Let's do something that you want that you can't easily find ready to wear. And that was really great advice. And he also fully like gets my like taste and style and he gives the best like detailing and finishing advice it's always the most wonderful experience to to go there and do it. i enjoy it so much we talk for such a long time so that's the plan of action hopefully by about sort of end of october november i should have the pieces in my possession um but the other thing i want to look at there is designing some shoes because you know what i'm like with my funny pointed ballet flats i don't know whether they do anything like that because you can actually make fully from start to finish your own pair of shoes i think when i next go in i'm going to look at their bespoke shoes um just to see if i can make some nice flats or even look at things that can be worn for for autumn winter but anyway a lovely day i'm now going to crack on with other things but i'm going to finish this vlog here because i've been yabbering on at you for such a long time don't forget that i've got my freddie's flowers discount code i'll pop all of the information in the description box it's 50 lydia if you wanted to sign up or gift a subscription to someone then it's a really great way to do it so yeah i will see you guys in my next video